is self a certainty? When we look at the human function, it, because it is working with a sense of individuality at first, it's con you're considering a sense of self, a thinker, the mind is engaged differently in a certain attitude of interpretation. And it is really life that can give those dimensions you're really not finding. Because it's not about somewhere you're not. It's actually about where you are and you can't see it. When this bit of wisdom trickles down on your forehead, you begin to realize that this life is built on how you communicate to it and how you receive communication. You have been receiving communication your whole life and in reception there's always expression as well. And so even though I'm saying you were doing one thing and then you were doing this thing, all of this is again relevant to you. You are the significance in how everything you've observed is meaningful to you. So when self-inquiry begins to replace the question, you see all answers are within you. And what that means is that very intricately, every detail, every aspect of that person's face you either hate or love, you know. Whether it was that girl that just passed your memory for an instant and it just blew your mind of the beauty of this world. Or whether it was that moment where men came together to build a better world. It is, it is all about how you are fascinated by the life that is here. What that means is I am speaking not as an individual, I am speaking as a selfless being. And what that means is not that I've forgotten a self, it's not that I don't, I, I don't know who I am, even though that seems to be the most beautiful part of the reality. It's simply that there doesn't need to be an answer when the question can't capture it all. So direct experience is that greater sense of an expanding drawing rather than us analyzing drawings made before. Because how could there be a past if it's still going? If we're still evolving, how could the experience of time be localized when we're constantly conceiving new senses of locality, going in new environments? And each time you step in an environment, There is a very big fascination with how our world works. And the mind seems, begins as a tunnel. But as you go on, you see that what is keeping you uh, even consciously present in, in your uh, navigation, your subtle planes of thought, is, is the actuality that the depth is giving you new viewpoints of the same thing. So what that means is, when I can, if I was to visualize an apple, this apple can be the same apple that Newton touched and the same apple that Eve touched. And so how are we making this real? It is because there's a communication and an engagement. So in our understanding of the simplicity of how we are alive, how the communication is alive as well, we begin to see that your sense of compassion and kindness is not a response to a past that could not find you when you were always found. You need to be free by seeing that all that you are doing is implying again your state of being. What do people do when they want happen, when they want to be happy? They seek for where the concept of happiness is, what the concept of happiness is, and they go and they're like, what is happiness? Tell me. And is it, is it a very wealthy lifestyle? Is it, is it where you're every single time you need? No. You begin to see on the subtler planes of the mind, every desire you ever wanted can be visualized. If your visualization becomes a bit sharp, you will begin to see who will, you will really find the edge of your thought. And when that happens, there is a 
it's 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 as if the self, the sense of you, is situated in a greater sense of you, and so the the the, the individual sense of conscious view, uh, you is actually uh, in omnipresent dissolving, similar to how candlelight basks in sunlight, similar to how a drop is dropped into the ocean to find its vastness anew. It is you who are choosing what you means to you. And not to really <coughs> try to find a cat in a hat, but we are exploring what we see to discover more about the nature of seeing. You know how there are people that say, I gotta see it to believe it, but you're seeing directly what you're, where you are now. Observe from here. Begin the question from the sense of knowing that does not need to give an answer based on social pressure, but is actually free to walk with the flow of where the eyes of man is leading. So what that means is, you may be in a party, you may be in that room, and you'd be like, all right, life's bothering here, but you must consciously begin to see that the only ability for you to get out of the room is to know that you were never just in that room. So similarly, uh, not that we want to suddenly change this into <laughs> uh, a fantasy about multidimensional travel, but we, we want to uh, align it in a way where you are going with what is real to you in your experience, you know. And this doesn't mean think of illusion because uh, however you justify illusion, whatever you consider, you're directly experiencing your con consideration. And so this was what was really fascinating for me because when I, I remember I would like to share something with you <coughs> about an aspect in my experience of life. And there was a moment I remember I had just uh, moved back from Canada to Iran. And we go to Iran and a grandfather who I loved but did not know so well because I was not near him, I began to get the news that he had passed away. And so a part of me was crying because it was bad news. But a part of me was crying because I was wondering, why? Why did someone suddenly go out the picture? And I remember in, in Iran, the, uh, the ceremony is very interesting. We. Anyways, we go to the grave, and I remember seeing my grandfather there, people around him crying. And I wondered what was being seen, because I, I had not been in his presence, but there was something in me that felt a loss. What was the sense of loss? And I remember just walking off, you know, and I had tears up here. You know, and mainly when I saw others crying too, the tears even amped up. But afterwards, the tears faded. I remember walking past every grave and seeing all those who had come into the experience of life to leave a memento behind. But then, as I was walking, I remember I began getting an idea and explaining to my own self, just as I was walking, just silently, in a sense, having that, being aware of that thought. I noticed it was a cyclical part of reality. That the tree outside, its, its leaves crumble in the passing of the season. And it is in our ignorance that we think people are a certain way and we judge whether we want to be with them or not. In actuality, you need to be with all the life that has come into your vision. You know, you must 
you must be drawn towards the divinity that you see within all being, whether it is your being or the being of another. We, we want to ground existential compassion here immediately. That is the soil of how we can develop the greatest technologies man has ever known beyond his knowing. <laughs> I remember walking there and I noticed that when someone passes away it is a lesson to everyone else in seeing how they had communicated to life. And not that we should all think about death in an obsessive way, but we should think about death in a natural way, as if it is in the law of this universe to change. We call it, we don't want things to change. That's a human idea. But nature is infinitely changing. And so how does an infinitely changing being figure itself out? And so we see based on linearity and how language has brought us so far, we are trying to use words. But it is about the sincerity of the experience that is flowing through your eyes. The gaze is not something we are here to take. It is we are so, something we're here to give. What that means, you are not here to just live for this individuality. You're not here just to maintain this individuality. That is one of the uh, problems that happens for a developing species, it seems, that it begins to individualize itself to the extreme. And as it individualizes itself to the extreme, it's not that we are creating extremists, <laughs> but we are getting rid of all ignorance. We are not letting names become people's faces. We are not letting words to justify action. We are looking around and in our ability to know ourselves as life form. There is a unity in our design. Every engineer looked at the world and he wanted to make something in the world. You want to serve life, but you have to survive. And so when, where does uh, serving reality come in your survival? This is where you must have the ability to simultaneously acknowledge all reality present in your experience. What that means is we do not fantasize to be in a fantasy. In our direct uh, confrontation and acknowledgement of that which is our present view, wherever we are as a being, the clarity is the alignment of how in novelty we have looked at ourselves again. And what that means is the beauty of failure, the beauty of falling down, or the beauty of anyone going through some kind of struggle, is that it is free information of how to handle that scenario the next time you're going there. And so when failure has become feedback, there is no right or wrong. And you are not disturbed. That is perhaps one of the most graceful moments where you as a human experience see, are, begin to realize and reveal in your own knowing for yourself that you are an existential and experiential view, regardless of how much they're judging the body, which is an aspect of your moment of awareness. You are your truth. And if a galaxy, if a neighboring galaxy wanted to gift the future to a past that thinks that it's lost, it would be a present. that could not consider the mice. You are in existential love. 
for there is no death until death thou come. You are alive. There is a profundity in every moment. And especially <coughs> how Mr. Within likes to communicate about advanced communicators, pilots of consciousness, treasure revealers of the subtler planes of man's abstraction. You will kind of, by bringing yourself into direct experience, once the self-talk fades, you must continue to still sincerely explore the nature of reality by being aware of the nature of your realness, of your being. For the Guru was not just a voice. He was not just a form. He was the mirror that was keeping a transcendental platform. And so it's the, it's the, ver it's the task of the Guru, and especially how his life would be designed, is that from his childhood he, he, is, he is seeking to, for moments to give great devotion to others. What that means is it's not to others, the being is happy within his own experience, so anything that is aware, present in his moment becomes a blissful knowing. For the, mo the experience, the observer of the object knows. What that means is there are no memories for what I'm saying right now will be a memory. So there is a flow. It's as if we've held the last feather on the wing of an angel to see that true love was faceless for it was momentary. And a smile that doesn't want anything will begin to see that he has given everything. Once you see, you don't need to disturb others. You will begin to be more observant of the self-reflective nature of your mind, and then you would seek your greater meaning through looking at how you have made life meaningful. And it is not about trying to sit down and to do a to-do list. Don't do that. You know, that's not... <laughs> even though it is good to sometimes make a to-do list to consciously recognize it, but we want to make it to be list and once you do you rip the list so the point is you don't need to list <laughs> that's the activity of making it to be list once you write whatever you want to be then you rip it and you're in the present moment and you acknowledge reality as you know and this is something i i did not understand i was uh when i was younger when i was younger i i remember the concept of God, all this, all this stuff that was mystical was there. All this stuff that was suggesting greater views was there. It's just that uh, my interest was not there. And then I began to realize the spiritual path or the path of self-discovery is something that needs to be opened to the individual by his knowing that what is within him is the experience that everything externally is also within the collective. So it's, a, it's as if even if we did take the subjectivity, our awareness of the subjectivity would then create another platform where we can observe that thought and in that observance of that thought, the observer is of an experience where he is not just making sound in a room. He will begin to see the whole room is the sound. And it's the word, as, as, as they've said in many ancient traditions. It may even blissfully bring laughter to your world. Beyond all suggestion, know that you have known.
bring your attention to a present moment that is here and now, as many saints and sages have said. And as you're in the moment, begin to experience the fullness by seeing how it is full and see that as you are looking at something full, a part of you knows that it's empty. That moment when you get angry at someone, even though you feel you're gaining something, even though you feel you're, you're communicating something they have to know and they have to do, a part of you is like, but still we are temporal. But still every moment is a gift. It's a blessing because every moment is a view of experience. It's a view of your world. There is something happening. There is a phenomena in regards to an individuality. What that means is, what if, just like how much we as beings who have gravity want to go into a state of non-gravity, what if uh, beings who, in a sense, uh, were experiencing zero gravity were just dying to, in a sense, come, in, come to... Uh, in a sense a place where it has gravity and just like how we see that there is zero gravity and there is regular gravity we're seeing that the dimensions are considered by where we are considering the first point of immediate duality so how you define good and bad is suggesting how your world is good and bad it's simple immediately clarify this for yourself and do it in a manner where you go in nature which Mr. Within recommends or in a park and go alone and after, after a very gentle walk, just sit down, be silent and still and just look at wherever you have sat down. And look at what is in front of you. And you're not here to, do, to meditate, you're here to just be. What that means is if every action was making you do something, this is of you in a sense, not in a sense doing, being aware of, in a sense, less doing, you know, but it's just that you, you need to be to see. I am, therefore I think that I am. I think for I am. Do you see? You know how they said I think? I think for I am. I am for I think. Dear God, let me check this. I think, therefore I am. It's not, that's not the beginning of the sentence. I am, for I think, for I am. I, I am. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think, therefore I am. You see, when did the golden ratio stop? <laughs> <clears throat> and when you've seen that hilarious scene in movies where There's this kid and, you know, someone's trying to give him this advice, this older person, you know, more wiser person. He says, just be yourself, man. Be yourself, you know. And the kid's like, oh, okay, okay, I'll be myself. And he doesn't know what he is because he's still looking. He is still imperfect to his own state of being. But once you allow yourself to see perfection as how you enter the, the, the novel stage, you will begin to see... The performer is no longer just performing for the performance. The performer is being the performance. It's as if it does not matter if this dancer was dancing on a stage in front of millions of people or if, if, or if he was dancing uh, on a mountain or on the edge of a cliff or wherever, on a skyscraper. You know, it, it wouldn't matter. He would be he's so involved in his moment of experience that the world listens to him. And when I say the world listens to him, it's not that a bird is tweeting. It's just that in your sincerity and honesty of just being who you are, you begin to see that within others and so you attract. And you don't, you don't attract, but your moment of knowing knows it before it knows it. 
And so if you wondered who was the person who said deja vu, it was you. <laughs> For it is up to man to decide where mankind is going. It is up to every individual human being to see that they are the drops within this river of life, this river of evolutionary transcendence. What that means is man trans transcended out of his, evolved out of his, you know, out of just being a body, you know, out of being just an animal. The ape stood on its, you know, stood on two feet. But now man is evolving and transcending beyond his physical body and beyond his subjective body. Get rid of beyond the physical part here. It doesn't need to be here. So man is transcending beyond the subjective body. And when that happens, conception is stopping. What that means is you are saying, wow, you thought it was just an entrance and the entrance was to a room that was constantly going and you're saying no. The entrance and the exit are one. The duality was why yin and yang were always in the circle of life. What that means is don't try to control the people around you because that is a false sense of control. We are all being controlled naturally by how we are alive, by the design of our intelligence. So what man needs to, to in a sense, evolve with the best technology is an awareness to a state of being that does not focus an intensity of reality where he feels he's too incapable to confront. You should be breaking doors with the simplicity of how your breath was the gift of life. For it's fine to chase a butterfly, but that moment when you've just sat by the flowers and you're looking at the elegance of a lotus and you suddenly see the butterfly has landed on your forehead. You need to take every image that you're aware of and see the artwork that it is as it is becoming present in your moment. You are not per se a thinker. Mr. Within suggests that you see that you are aware of thought. Because thought is still being something is observed as much as this bunch is being observed. What that means is when I say, for example, uh, uh, happiness, there's thoughts on happiness. You know, it's as if there's imagery, and this imagery is signifying certain things based on our changing imagery. You know, and it's as if the only reason man could compare was he he had the reality of the first dimension, and he had the reality of the other dimension, which the first dimension was going towards to some degree. What that means is um, if I had a laser beam here you know with different colors let's say RGB you know red, green, blue and three laser beams are just going you would see that if I was to take an item or anything and take my hand and to move it between them between the three colors take my finger and move it between these three colors between these three horizontal laser beams you know I begin to see that my hand was the similarity. My hand was going through these three dimensions, but it was changing. What that means is, is it's as if our experience of this life and the dimensions of space and time that are real to us are constantly growing. So it's a very phenomenal thing when you realize space and time is growing with how your vision is growing. What that means is self implies other. What that means is what you hate about that person, that moment when you are judging that person for being the worst person, you're actually speaking to yourself because how else can you know what bad is based on what you've gone through? The criminals that uh, you see and the criminal that the criminal sees are two different criminals. So you must become aware that in being aware of such a difference, There is no 
victim that needs to victimize itself. Get rid of this victim section and this jail section. Just edit it properly. <sighs> Reality is graceful. Reality is peaceful. There are many things that are present in the mind of a being. you will be aware of a sense of self that is aware of all senses of self within the moment. This will have a selfless feel to it, but it will also create a multidimensional view that is real to you. This multidimensional experience does not need to be communicated to anyone else because it is for your work. If you're communicating it, you're not taking your life's work seriously. And what that means is you you are here to uh, see that self is not just a temporal certainty. It is that which is aware of the temporal certainty, which the temporal calls eternal. But it is nameless. It is unspeakable. It is an aspect of your self-awareness where the, the self is so integratively present within the spectrum that... There is no worry. For it's like a finger freaking out and flipping someone off when it was connected to the intelligence of the palm. You see? So it didn't have to worry about how its state of consciousness is present. And that is where the tranquility within your being is not a constant clarification of how life is happening, but there is a empty table for infinity to ro write its un un unwritable remembrance to something. Uh, <sighs> All right. Let's think of it this way. When we look around, we see objective reality. When I walk in a park, when I'm sitting on a bench, I'm looking at, I'm seeing a bench, right? As I'm aware, uh, look out, I'm objectively considering things. When I look in, when I consider, when I try to see where this bench is, it's like a subtle, subtler plane of awareness where uh, we call it thought or subjective sense of things. So when I look within, or when I internalize, I begin to see it's, it's more subjective, and uh, it's also a, a, a beyond the subjective. There's an unknown thing where I don't know what's beyond my ideas, you know. And this is perhaps how many readers began to become explorers of their own ability to extract meaning. Your senses are not caging you from truth. Your senses are a stepping stone and it's as if it's the first stepping stone and you must put your foot on this first stepping stone and then get to step on the second stepping stone and when you step on the second stepping stone you're totally aware of the first stepping stone that you're no longer on the first stepping stone so instead of saying be on the first stepping stone and believing that you've passed the first stepping stone 
uh, go into the second stepping stone and see that you've passed the first second. So, and what that means is the second stepping stone is going from an idea of conviction to the direct experience of the concept. And the direct the experience of the concept will take you into a sense of consideration of what thought is. So visualization will no longer be visualization. Imagination will no longer be imagination for you in the same way. It will become your moment of experience, which is now. And so when you see, instead of you being something that is defined, who is having a new moment, you see you are a novel, untouchable experience of time and space that the transcendental intelligence was just like how an ocean knew everything uh, or knew every drop. So nothing is changing from your life. Your awareness uh, to the changes of life are sh is shifting. And as Henry David Thoreau, this American poet, very this realized being said, was that it's not what you're looking at that matters. It's what you see. So, if you don't know what the exit sign means or the, what the word letters E-X-I-T mean, you know, you w might not find uh, meaning in the e exit signs. You'll be passing the exit signs very blindly. So we need to become mindful and begin to see what information and what experiences life has shared with us and to see the steps we have taken. And in seeing those steps, every experience you go through, it's as if you're taking from some, something from this life. And so it's very important that you also uh, incorporate the concept of giving. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in, in, in one of his speeches says that leave no stone unturned. He believes in that, you know. And it, it happened at one point in his life where that was something that was real to him. And in, in actuality, you should leave no stone unturned because everything that is guiding you, everything that is aware of, even the people you meet on a daily basis, every moment of that experience in a continuum of space and time is, is what you have to work with to see what is working. And it's, it's beautiful, it's phenomenal. It's as if your mind begins to uh, reutilize everything it knows. It's like right now, if I was to told you, uh, just for a second, you know, and it's okay if it's in a vague way, just consider all that you know, and you'd be like, all right, I know a lot, gosh, I know a lot, right? So you'd see uh, all this knowing is present here. So, it's not about what you're carrying. It's about you kind of realizing everything is being carried. What that means is regardless of how much this person believes in what, and this person believes in, you know, this person believes in what, The truth cannot be justified when its actuality is beyond justification because it's a dynamic state, it's an active experience, it's an awareness to self in a manner where if you were just an individual sitting in the room, it's the whole room being aware of you. Now instead of the room, think of the whole sky. And what's the whole sky? It's the cosmos in your moment. So perhaps when one man said, go find this suit within, it really means very gracefully and compassionately self-inquire about what it is that is your experience. And don't try to linearize it. Don't try to make, have it have meaning. I realize that in Buddhism, there's the great uh, wisdom of emptiness. And what that means is, don't go in an empty room and expect something more. Just realize the nature. 
realize how certain expectations you have are just based on how you are seeing things and sometimes others can't have that view and so it's very important to communicate what is real to you you know what that means is before we really get to the actual gate which is the self-inquiry of objective and subjective reality simultaneously people need to become aware of objective reality and that there's a sub also a subjective reality but also the willingness to explore reality in, 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 the, in the moment and so it's again that sense of eternity in how you are always within a novel mo uh, experience you know so this was the phenomenal thing for me that I remember I remember that I, I, I went to some bookstore and I go to this section, this Buddhism section, you know, go to chapters in Canada. And as I'm in this bookstore, I just look at how many books are written on Buddhism and meditation and whatnot. So I just intuitively go and choose a few, you know. And I, I, I buy five books that I just felt intuitively I should choose. And I go and one of them was this book, you know, a Tibetan book, book of meditation. Very nice book. And get rid of the title of the book. And in one of these books, which I'm not going to share the title for, it's not the title that's important. I go outside and there's this meditation technique. And regardless of whatever it is, I remember being by the stream and I'm alone in nature, you know. And I begin reading and as I'm wondering, like, what am I doing? You know, as this, this question is coming in my awareness, I, I begin to see that just like how I'm holding this book in my hand, my physical body and any consideration of my physical body is being kept in my moment of experience which was an awareness of all that was present so I realized wait a minute it's as if I'm aware of this physical body being present which I'm not you know it's fine totally I I, I, I believe in hospitals <laughs> but it's 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 just that there is this wind of remembrance that just intuitively stops the action that you know should not be done, you know. There is no tragedy here, but accuracy demands an audience that's willing to be accurate. But again, it is not about what we're comparing. It is not about what you're seeing, per se. It is about, uh, it, again, uh, it's not about, <whistles> correct this word, it's not about what you're looking at that matters, it's what you're seeing. You know, and to some degree, it's not about what you're seeing that matters, it's what you're, in a sense, being, you know. And of course, every being is different from my experience, uh, it began as a sense of spirituality in regards to some attitudes but then it turned into my own curiosity to see what is the nature of all existence what is the essence of this reality what is this plane of existence you know and that is when I remembered that when you're in a plane of existence you must be aware of the pilot of consciousness. You must be aware of how attention is attending the moment. And perhaps one of the best things that a human being can do is to share a new view. So sometimes when I have a problem, I don't go Googling answers about it. I just go into the situation, go into the problem, and 
gain a feedback of how it was, whether I achieve it or not, you know. And if you trust your moment, you will trust anything that happens, you know, but not in, in a way where, you know, <laughs> uh, we are being careless. We are being very careful, but not in a way where there's danger, but in, because we are full of care for once a being survives in the fittest way, it begins to love how the survival has been going on. It begins to love how it is. Love is growth. And the greatest love is found through a sincerity and honesty that is not questioning itself. Do you know? Do you, right now, many people who are depressed or stressed or feel they're incapable or can't get through things are, you know, they're, they're saying, oh, I can't do this. You know, they're questioning something. You know, they're questioning themselves and the idea of their ability. Now, I want you to imagine, you know how you walk from, you know, here to the grocery store, you know, very normal. What if you began questioning how you were walking? What, what if you began questioning every step and you began to never get to the grocery store? <laughs> so you don't have to question things that are not, in a sense, revealing a truth to you beyond words, you know. What that means is the auspicious are never seeking an auspicious reality. They are naturally present and in their presence the pond has settled. And in that settlement, your self-inquiry is guiding every movement of others to directly what we know now. Much blessings and blessings.